Hi, I'm Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and today Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life is going to guide us through Block 9 of the Bella Skill Builder Quilt. Use a 2.0 stitch length and press according to the pattern. Okay, we're going to start making our lazy angle blocks. We're going to use the Creative Grids Lazy Angle Ruler and you'll be lining up the five and a half inch vertical line on the ruler with the edge of the fabric. You'll also line up the top of the ruler with the top of your fabric strip. And there's a five and a half inch line horizontal on the ruler that will line up with the bottom of your fabric. And we're gonna make that first cut and flip the ruler and this time you will again line up the top of the ruler with the top of the fabric. There's a five and a half inch angled line that will line up. And we'll go ahead and make that cut. And you can continue just turning, flipping the ruler each time. And you will need to cut eight of those. Okay, we're going to cut the large angle pieces from the four and a half inch background strip. And we're gonna do this in the same way that we did with the five and a half inch strips. We're gonna line up the top of the ruler with the top of the strip, the four and a half inch vertical line with the edge of the strip, and the four and a half inch horizontal line with the bottom of the strip. And you're going to cut 16 of these segments. Okay, it's time to cut the small angle units. And I've trimmed the selvages to begin so that I have a nice straight even edge to begin with. Um, we're going to be using our five and a half inch strips. And again, lining up the top of the ruler with the top of the strip. And we're going to line up the the black vertical line closest to the angle side of the ruler with the edge of the fabric. And again, the five and a half inch horizontal line will line up with the bottom of our fabric. We're gonna cut that unit. To cut the next segments, we're going to actually flip the ruler upside down and we're going to look for the black angle line to line up and the five and a half inch mark will line up with the top of the fabric and the bottom edge of the ruler this time um, will be even with the bottom of the fabric. And so this cut is a straight cut. I'll give you that angle. And then we're going to flip it back to the right side to continue cutting. And upside down again, matching up the bottom. And you will cut eight of those. Okay, now we're gonna use our four and a half inch strip of Caribbean to cut our small angle segments. And just like we did with the background white, we are going to line up the top of the ruler with the top of the fabric and we're going to use this um, first black vertical line that's closest to the angle to line up with the edge of our fabric. The four and a half inch horizontal line will line up with the bottom of the fabric. I'm gonna make that cut. The ruler goes completely upside down and turned. Bottom of the ruler lines up with the bottom of the fabric here. And we're just going to continue turning the ruler back right side up. And flipping it over. And um, a good way to remember it is when the ruler is upside down, the bottom of the ruler lines up with your fabric, with the bottom of your fabric. And when the ruler is right side up, the top of the ruler lines up with the top of your fabric. 
and you will make 16 of these small angle units. Okay, now we're going to put the large angle and the small angle together. Um, we've got the white large angle and the gray small angle. We're going to put them right sides together. And the gray piece is actually going to extend just by about a quarter of an inch at the top. You'll have a little triangle there extending. And at the bottom, you'll be able to see a, a small triangle of the white background fabric. And um, it, that'll be right at the, about the quarter inch mark at the top and the bottom. And you'll want to pin to keep these in place while you sew. And we'll be sewing that with a quarter inch seam. And once it's sewn, you can tell that we've, we've got that triangle at the top and we've got that triangle at the bottom. And when you press it, the seam open, you'll be able to tell that the top and the bottom line up at, um, at both ends, the two pieces. And don't worry about trimming the dog ear at the top, that'll be trimmed later. But this one down at the bottom, you'll want to trim that off so that you can eliminate bulk in that seam. You'll need to make eight of these. And it's the same technique for the smaller pieces with the white and the Caribbean, um, four and a half inch units. And you will make 16 of these. Okay, we're gonna move on with making our lazy angle block. And we've got the lazy angle um, unit. And we have a five and a half inch square of our Caribbean fabric. And we're gonna begin by drawing a diagonal line um, from one corner to the other corner. Just use a ruler to mark your line. And once we have that line drawn, we're gonna put our fabric right sides together with our unit, and we're actually going to stitch right on the line. Now, that being said, sometimes I like to go just a thread's width inside the line so that we get the full um, turning when we, when we press this. To the left, stitch right. a little bit to the left. Stitch a little bit to the left of that line. So we're going to stitch, and then um, we're actually going to trim off. Now this, this you want to be careful with. We're going to trim off this top section. You'll be able to look at the diagram in your pattern, and you'll be able to tell that the bottom unit looks like the, the diagram in the pattern. And so then we'll trim off this top section. And that just gets discarded. And um, you're going to have the finished block. And you'll need to make eight of these. And with the smaller units, you will need to make 16 of these. Then we'll put them together. OK, it's time to make the large lazy angle block. You're going to take four of the units and you're going to um, sew together the, the bottom pair, and you're going to sew together the top pair. And that will put together to make this block. We'll be making two of these blocks. Um, super fun block. I just love this secondary little pattern that it makes. OK, with the smaller units, we're going to be making two different blocks. We're going to take 12 of them to put in together into this unit, and we're going to take four of them to make this unit. Um, once these are set in the quilt, they actually will be together. Um, by creating these units separately, it keeps us from having to do a partial seam during the quilt assembly process. So this makes it really nice at the end. But you will need to make sure you've got these pieces following the diagram in your pattern. That's all for this month. Come back next month for our next Skill Builder Block. See you then.